This Red 3 Games preview is brought to you by Netflix. It's my great pleasure to be joined by Caleb Arsenault, who is the senior producer yeah. over at Fifth Cell for Scribblenauts Unmasked. Um, as someone who has always admired the Scribblenauts game, mm -hmm. the integration of the DC heroes was like, okay, okay, you, now you really, really, really have my attention. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, one of the key senses we, we've got from the game is that you have managed to have a catalog of more DC heroes than you've ever seen in one place at any time? Oh, in any video game, really. I mean, we, we packed the game with over 2,000 of them. And I mean, that's more than we initially even planned, right? The initial list that we had was about 1,200, but because we just kept That's still finding... a really big list, just so you know. Yeah, well, not for us. Right? <laughs> I, I, I can name 30 <laughs> with confidence. <laughs> the 1,200 is like not as ambitious, right? And so we just kept filling it out and filling it out. And DC would even come back and say like, oh yeah, you found that guy? Yeah, put him in too. And so we just kept going back and forth, and the final number was north of 2,000. So we're excited. All right, well, let's take a look at the game. We're going to have Nick Robinson of Address the Sass, and, and, and in general young person around the office who's to be driving this, if you want to hop us in, and if you want to give us a sense of what we're looking at. So this is the intro to the game. Maxwell could create any object by writing it in his notebook. And Lily had a globe that let her travel anywhere she wanted. All right, so we have the setup yep. to the game. Uh, where are we now? I, mean, this, I, this, I assume this is where we kind of go into our various missions yeah. and our challenges. Well, as you saw, Maxwell emerged uh, from his you know, teleportation uh, in Gotham, you know, next to the bat signal. And so what you can see here is, is, are all of our what we call heroic feats. Now these are like bite-sized challenges to the player. Like you've played puzzles, you've played challenges in other Scrollmods mm -hmm. games before, and that's what these are. However, they're procedurally generated. So every single time you load this map, uh, you'll see new quests to do. And so you'll see these uh, icons above the characters' heads, and that means that a heroic feat is available, right? So this guy is like, oh no, I dropped my key at the bottom of the, the ball of like all so these spike balls. So you have a puzzle balls. right yeah. here that would potentially unlock yes. another mission once you once you've solved it. Correct, yeah. Every time you solve one of these puzzles, you actually get something called reputation. And that is the currency used to like unlock new content, unlock levels, costumes for Maxwell, superpowers for your custom creations. And so what we're going to do right now is I'm going to illustrate you know, our procedural content. So we're going to go ahead and open up the uh, pause menu and okay. uh, select restart. And after we do this, you're gonna, the map will reload and you'll actually see a whole different set of puzzles. So if we just like look Very around nice. here, we could just kind of see like the fact that everything is wiped clean yeah. and there's and a whole not what we set. saw before. And so we really are emphasizing replayability, right? And so it's like every single time you go in here, there'll be brand new challenges to complete. So now those challenges themselves, mm -hmm. Are they procedurally generated, or is the availability and maybe who's offering the challenges, that's what's pr procedural? So there's a, there's a skeleton there, of course, to make it fun that we scripted. However, the participants, the frequency, the location of where the objective is, uh, all those are procedural. So even if you may encounter like the, the, a similar quest, it has a new objective, it may have a new enemy to fight, it may have a new location for its like objective. There's a lot of differences there that are all randomly generated. I mean, what's interesting is that clearly you guys are very confident in sort of what the core gameplay is, mm -hmm. that you know what those discrete elements are that you just need to kind of say, as long as these five things happen, we know yeah. we have a proper challenge. And we've done, you know, we've done these sort of uh, challenges before in previous Scribblenauts games, and we've distilled down what makes Scribblenauts fun, and, and experiencing these challenging, challenges in the sandbox is, is really rewarding. Now, here's one thing I do find a little bit interesting. Outside of the specifics of the DC universe, there's nothing in the previous Scribblenauts games that would preclude you from doing something that would be attributed to a superpower. Mm -hmm. You know, you can pretend you could fly, you yeah. could you know, punch someone in the head. Yeah. But what's interesting is because it's in the superhero universe, I, I can see how you're already going to start thinking more mm -hmm. in a superhero way. Was, was that kind of, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how you sort of balance, yeah. yes, of course it's novel that we have superheroes, but in the Scribblenauts universe, well, Maxwell's kind of a superhero already. Oh yeah, and, and on par with a lot of the, his compatriots in the DC uh, you know, catalog. And basically, you're right, I think it does inspire players to do different things with Maxwell than in previous Scribblenauts games because they're surrounded by people who are amazing and full of you know, power and, and are shooting beams and flying around and stuff. 
And uh, yeah, I think it actually does goad the player on a little bit more and inspire them. So when, when you're saying that this, this, this area, how the machines are procedurally mm -hmm. generated, and obviously there are these little mini puzzles to help you know open up even more of the missions. Do you see the player refreshing a lot, or do they kind of just go in there and do a full play session with just this one map, for lack of a better word, open to them? Yeah, so actually that's a really good, uh, that's a really good point. And we've provided a lot of incentive for players essentially to increase their reputation. Mm -hmm. And I could actually show you some of that right now. So if we actually just spawn any DC object. Uh, a small batarang. Yeah, so if we put that on the ground, anything that's in the DC uh, the, anything that we've added in the DC world has this little bat computer icon that pops up to the right of it. And that, this actually opens up the bat computer feature. And this is huge for us. Uh -huh. Because basically what this is, is an encyclopedia of over 2,000 DC objects. Everything that we put in the game has a biography written for it. And so this was, this was insane for us to do. I mean, even Bat Gadgets has a bio, and they, it has kind of like Wikipedia-style links that you can click on and go to different articles and learn more and more. So I'm assuming, and I actually am quite the DC fan. Nice. It's kind of a challenge. I have to sort of really start to ply my brain about, you know, <laughs> sort of the arcana, see if I can bring it out, and then I'll, and, and, and that's how it enters into the computer, and I can yeah. learn more about it. The Bat Cow. Yeah, actually, yeah, the, 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 each I, of these did, I, I didn't know about the bat cow as, as much. <laughs> there's I, a I, bat cow, actually. Yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> everything, and, and everything that we added, it, you know, comes from the comic line. Right. You know, and so it's like, it's in there. You can Google it, search for these issues. And, and obviously, we're, we're, we're already seeing that right here with, with, yeah. with, with Batman is, you know, there's so many different kind of skews to some mm -hmm. of the primary characters. I mean, how, how broad did you get? We went as broad as possible, and it really depended on how uh, popular a character was. For Batman, we actually have uh, you know 33 versions, and in fact, uh, in the top left corner, you'll see the magnifying glass. And if you tap on that and, and type in Batman, you'll actually uh, be able to see all the different versions of Batman that we have. And yeah, we have got four pages of it, and basically, it's hey, who's below Batman Beyond? That's actually Batman Caveman. That's okay. a Caveman Batman. Okay. It's actually straight up from the comic books where Bruce Wayne was traveling back in time and he essentially uh, you know, was the incarnation of Batman through every period of our history. Wow. And so we went pretty obscure sometimes. So can I have um, Nick go look for a couple characters? Oh, of course. Okay. Hit it. Can you look for Plastic Man? I'm kind of really honing in on when I must have been a child. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there so he not is. Only, not only do we have Plastic Man, and this ties into your previous question, not only do we have Plastic Man, but we also have a costume for Maxwell. Now, actually, this is what you use reputation to unlock. So mm -hmm. you're in the world, you're, you're solving these challenges, but when you go into the back computer, you can actually unlock powers and costumes for Maxwell to use himself. What else do you got? Um, uh, Okay, you, you have a better knowledge. If throw one out, just be like, oh my god, I can't believe that's in there. Hmm. All right, I would say, uh, I would say something pretty obscure is uh, uh, type in uh, Despotelis. Or even you could just do, you know, Despot. So this is a really interesting character. Okay, yeah, you're gonna have to explain this to me. <laughs> okay, so basically, this is a virus. And this virus is a yellow lantern. You know, there's green. Oh lanterns, yeah, yeah, right? oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. he's actually part of the Sinistro Corps, which is what they call the Yellow Lanterns, and right. they're, the, they're the mortal enemies of the Green Lantern Corps. So this is a virus, and it's a virus, but it's a sentient virus that sort of has an agenda, and it's evil, right? And inspires I mean, fear. I have my affection for Green Lantern. I, uh -huh. I did not know that you guys went so granular to get the more microbial members <laughs> of the Sinestro Corps. <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, you know, I mean, how much do you think that the player is going to be sort of discovering mm -hmm. of that level of depth? I, I think many people who are going to pick up this game are going to be aware that that potential is there. But yeah. uh, I mean, is, what, what do you think is there in terms of gameplay mm -hmm. to help remind the player, hey, dig a little deeper because there's something waiting for you there? Well, actually, that's a great question because that's why the, the, all the objects that are used in these heroic feats are procedural. So that it can use an obscure character. It doesn't always. Oh, so I could just run into Despotalis and be like, hey, Who there, are you? virus yeah. guy. <laughs> exactly. So it really reinforces itself so that people will see something that just looks interesting and they're able to click on that back computer icon and actually go in and learn about so it. So that's the big pink writable Batman Beyond. Yes. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, now, now my imagination is just exploding inside my head. And actually, because he's a good guy and Despotelis is a bad guy, they automatically uh, do not like each other. Right? And so they'll automatically start fighting. And so a lot of the rivalries that you would expect to see, because he's a virus, he's essentially right. making Batman Beyond you know, sick. sick. And, so, and so basically a lot of the rivalry that you've come to expect from the comics world is evident in here. You could actually match people up. And because the, that kind of that, that rule or that logic is already embedded in those various characters. Yes. I mean, this is, yeah. <laughs> and actually it's really, so that's really a good point. He tried to give Batman a gun. But and Batman, Batman doesn't. Take it. Batman never uses guns, and so he'll never accept it. So not only was it, it well, was, also wait, am I right that Batman's now trying to keep Maxwell from using a gun? Correct. Well, because Maxwell actually just gunned down that scientist in front of Batman, so he's actually going to try to uh, serve up some justice. Well, I mean, obviously, it's it's honoring the essential legacies <laughs> of the characters, but it, it is it is kind of fun that like you know they're, yeah. they're you're giving no quarter on something as sacrosanct is obviously his his. Uh, his, his non-gun using, and he, he's against killing people. No, that's... Okay, I want to see cool. this tiny killer crack. There you go. <laughs> oh, oh, this is going to be a very one-sided fight. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but tiny killer croc could actually lift people up and slam them, so that's what he did. That's what he did there. Yeah, you're going to be hard. I guess, yeah, I guess you could just shoot him, you know? Shoot <laughs> Batman, Nick. Okay, can you give him an apple and try to make peace with him? He's going to be a pretty singular purpose at this point. All right. He's, he's going to okay, go well for you. Huge apple. There you go. Well, maybe if we bring in Robin. Okay, he's going to throw Nightwing. it at you now. Okay, okay bring in Nightwing. <laughs> Let's see if maybe that'll pacify him. <laughs> All right. Yes, because. No, he's also going to probably go after you, too, because he's like, hey, if. Who's ever okay, Batman's okay. enemy is my try enemy. Try this, try this. And maybe maybe he will not be available because it does skew a little bit more adult. Mm -hmm. But uh, Lobo. <laughs> or, uh, yeah, I wonder. I wonder if we have him. Oh, Yay! Well. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Lobo... Oh, he looks the way he should. And Lobo has a very specific thing that he likes to ride around on that perhaps we yes. have as well. Can you put that in there? I think it's actually Lobo's motorcycle. It's his motorcycle. Yeah, it's, yeah, there you go. There it is. You could actually ride that too if you want. You know, no big Yay. deal. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you said 2,000 characters, obviously both from the villains and from the heroes. Mm -hmm. uh, what were sort of the limits? Like, what, what were the lines that you, you, know, you had to draw for yourself so you just didn't probably go slightly crazy yeah. trying, trying to find everything out there. Well, I mean, obviously we focused on the superheroes and supervillains. You know, there's right. a lot of there's a lot of characters that make up the DC mm -hmm. Comics world. You know, somebody's aunt, somebody's cousin, second, you know, nephew or something like that. And not all of those made it in, you know, especially if they weren't featured prominently in the comics. However, we're really satisfied in terms of the coverage that we did do on all the villains and superheroes. Um, so is, is there anything else in the game that, that you'd like to show us today? Yeah, actually. So, uh, you know, we have a lot of customization with the costumes and stuff like that. But something that uh, players really loved from previous Scribblenauts games was our uh, object editor. Mm -hmm. And so what we're going to do is uh, if we're, we'll open up the world map, uh, which is an icon right next to the uh, right mode. There we go. And go down oh, to... So you have more settings than just that. Oh, yeah. So. No, we have a whole world. Actually, scroll down a little bit slower to the bottom. And we have all these uh, levels. These are all uh, places set in the DC Comics world that you would come to expect. We've got Atlantis. We've got Themyscira, the home, the homeland of uh, Wonder you Woman. You just start in Gotham. And yeah, then, exactly. Yes, and, then... and you go through all these different areas. And not only that, but on the bottom, uh, these are optional. But you can actually use Reputation to unlock the origin stories and play through those. Oh wow! For each of the Justice League characters, right? And so you could go see, you know, Superman's origin, how he crashes on Earth, and you could kind of like help him. You know, survive and and uh, and and you know grow up to become Superman. And so we're gonna go to the Bat Cave, yeah, which is the little little Bat Cave symbol right there. And uh, we'll open up the Hero Creator. And okay. Actually, uh, and actually take you through. So it's an object creator. It's a hero creator. Correct, because it has all the DC object uh, characters. And so if you click on the little icon above Alfred here, he'll actually ask you. He's like, open the Hero Creator, and you'll say, yes, of course. Because he's a helpful man. He yes, does what he he's is. told. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, we're, so we'll go to new, 
and uh, we'll take your favorite uh, DC object just to start with. Kind of start with a template. Mm -hmm. So who's your favorite DC Comics character? Ah, uh, my favorite. Let's go. You know what? Because I've really been enjoying reading it lately. Let's go with Aquaman and just see what all we right. can do with that. All right. Let's do it. And of course, just like Batman, we have all these different versions of Aquaman. Right. As well. So, you know. You yeah, not the mullet version. Okay. I like, I like, all right. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, not the mullet version. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So this, I believe this is actually the 80s version of Aquaman. And that's what I'm <laughs> familiar with, so. <laughs> All right, so that's cool, and, and he looks great, obviously, right? Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, tap on his head and drag his head to the trash can, to the top right. And let's find- painful, okay. Yeah, <laughs> and let, he's fine, still breathing. And then go to the stamps section, which should be two over, there you go. And then uh, let's open up the notepad in the top left oh, there. Oh, neat. And, uh, and then whose head can we put on this guy? Maybe a villain. Maybe yeah, a villain. Let's, let, let, let's try Mixelplek. All right, you all know, right. Because we have, and of course I'm, I'm now asking poor Zach, poor yeah. Nick over yeah, here, he may, he to may spell not be one of the hardest to spell <laughs> names in anything. I, is it, yeah. I think we're, I think we're on the right, there yeah. we go. Now select his head and drag his head, oop. All right, try it again. And then this time we'll get his head and just drag his head over and uh, we'll put his head on top of Aquaman. And then go ahead and use uh, the stylus to drag his torso, that's off to the left. Uh, and drag that to the trash so it's off screen. So now we have Mr. Aquaplixic. Yeah, uh, <laughs> this is getting fun. I'm having fun here. So, I mean, and we could also change his proportions a little bit. So if you go back to the arrow that, uh, that we started on, the arrow section that modifies the stamps, yeah, that one right there, uh, we could actually select his arm and actually use the slider bar that's to the left to increase or decrease the size. We can make this, you know, as ridiculous as we want. We can make him really ripped. We can make him, you know, really uh, you know, kind of puny. <laughs> and we can change the, we can change it anyway. Make him lopsided. Really so let's just make one arm and one leg a little bit. Uh, there you go. Yeah. There you go. All right. <laughs> and you can tap on a leg. There you go. That's, that's classic fifth dimension mischief. Right yeah. I like how the knee is right oh, there man. tucked under the armpit. And he looks like he needs to go to the hospital. <laughs> really, it's, 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 it looks pretty bad. Well, see, this gives him a really strong backstory of his yeah. just absolute absurdist contempt for all things. Yes, exactly. So. And yeah, of course, you could change the colors, you could change the materials. There's a lot of different things you could do in here. So we've added to the functionality of this, not only with the DC Comics character pieces, but also if you look at the glove with holding the little uh, diamond mm -hmm. on the right, these are actually superpowers that you can attach to your custom creations. Back to your earlier question of like, what is the reputation used for? It's used for stuff like this. And you can actually, there's over a hundred superpowers here. You can put all of them on your character. I mean, I, I have to say what, what, what has me interested is there's so many ways that the different aspects of the game just really tie into one another yes. that I can see really, oh, oh, that is awesome. <laughs> So that's actually, <laughs> let's go to the save button on the bottom left, and we can actually name this guy whatever you guys want. I, I have a name for you. Hmm. Adam. <laughs> I think that's a good name for him. And there's a, there should be a delete button there, and you could, yeah, there you go. Um, now, I, I am curious, uh, is there any type of online functionality to sort of share these creations between other players? Yeah, no, exactly. On the Wii U and PC, uh, we have sharing so that, you know, this isn't limited to just your local copy. Uh, you can actually share Mr. Adam uh, with the uh, greater online Scribblenauts community. And actually, we've seen a lot of success uh, from Unlimited. Uh, there's a lot of user-generated content, essentially, that has been shared. It's well, been maybe we'll hold on to this one and see <laughs> if we can put it out there to see what kind of unfortunate nonsense <laughs> someone can do with Mr. Adam. Uh, but I would like to say I finally feel most comfortable of, of how I've envisioned myself in supervillain form. Oh, awesome. Uh, Caleb, uh, so the game, it is imminent to release. When does yes. it come out? September 24th, which is this Tuesday. And that is 3DS, that is the Wii U, and that is the PC. Yes. All right, well, thank you so much for stopping by. That was really, really, really enjoyable. I can't wait to play myself. Awesome. Take thank care. you very much. Hey, if you want to support more of this preview coverage, why not check out Netflix? With Netflix, you can instantly watch TV shows and movies directly to your home, saving time, money, and hassle. Netflix is available on a ton of devices you already own, like the Xbox 360, PS3, Wii, and more. Plus, Netflix is the only place you can watch movies like Treasure Planet, Disney's attempt at doing a pirate movie in space. 
You can get a free 30-day membership and support Red 3 Games by signing up at netflix.com slash red3games.